Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Immersive Engineering tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at two multi-block machines. They're simple and cheap to craft, one of which, the metal press, is very, very useful. The other one, I don't see... At the moment, I can't think of a huge use for it, but it's probably got some uses that I'm just not thinking of. So, you can let me know in the comments what you would use it for. The only block we're going to need to build is in this episode is the heavy engineering block. We're going to talk about multi-block structures this episode, so we've already made everything else that we need uh, in the previous episodes. So, let's get that right out of the way. So the heavy engineering block, just like the light engineering block, is used to make multi-block structures. Generally, the more expensive ones uh, use the heavy engineering block, and the simpler ones use the light engineering block. So the heavy engineering block, in order to craft that, Oh, come on, it messed up the recipe. These crafting benches are annoying. Okay, so, in order to craft the heavy engineering block, you're going to need four steel ingots, two pistons, two steel mechanical components, which are just steel ingots, four of them around a copper ingot, and then electrum, an electrum ingot. Um, so you're going to need, in order to make this, you're going to need to get gold dust and silver dust and put them together to make electrum dust and then smelt it into an ingot. In my Let's Play series, that's why I had to go find gold and silver, just to make one electrum ingot <laughs> for that. So that's how you get heavy engineering blocks. Very, uh, very important that you can get these. You get two of them, so just like the light ones. Now, before we go talk about these things, let's go and check a, take a look at the metal press. So, if you go into your engineer's manual, under Heavy Machinery, you'll find the metal press. It's very, very simple. It's only a couple of blocks. It requires three steel scaffolding, one piston, two conveyor belts, and one heavy engineering block. And you can see it building itself right there. So, the way that you construct this is very, very simple and straightforward. Place three steel scaffolding in a line. Place a piston on top of the center one. You can use anything to rotate this, but thankfully the engineer's hammer does it for you as well. Rotate the piston so that the wooden part is facing towards the steel scaffolding. Then take conveyor belts and place them on the scaffolding so they're both going in the same direction. Then place your heavy engineering block on top of the piston, and then whack the piston with the engineer's hammer. And now we have the metal press. I always love the way these things look. It looks fantastic. Um, you could chain these together, craft, and put conveyor belts however you want off of this thing. It inputs through the input side, now it puts to the output side, which is all dependent on how you built this thing. Uh, it does take power in from the top. Uh, just always look for this little symbol on, on one of the edges and sides, and that'll tell you where the power goes. So, put the LV wire connector on it, and I will f plug it into our existing power grid. And now we can run this thing. Now, the way that this works is that you take things like metal ingots. You can be iron, steel, uh, aluminum, any metal that can be formed into a plate in immersive engineering. Um, so that means, just to go through it, iron, aluminum, lead, constantin, and steel. Um, I don't know if you can use other mods, metals to make any of these, but you can certainly throw these things on the metal press. Now, if I throw a steel ingot on this metal press, you notice that it kind of goes into a weird sort of uh, flat mode, and then goes through the metal press, and nothing happened. Okay. Uh, that's where these things come in. These presses. These press molds. The metal press doesn't do anything unless you put a mold in it. Okay. So, you're going to need that. So there's three different types of molds, um, two of which, oh, I got a typo there, I didn't even notice that. Uh, two of which, this, uh, the, the plate mold and the uh, rod mold, are actually used by immersive engineering. Right now, there don't appear to be any gears in the mod, but there's a gear mold, which will allow you to create gears from other mods. So, uh, you know, build craft, forestry, thermal foundation, 
any mod that uses a gear, you might a metal gear, you might be able to use the metal press to make it. So to make these molds, they all are the same recipe, they're just slightly different. To make the metal press mold, you take four steel plates and place them uh, in the cardinal directions and then put a steel plate in the middle, and that gives you the plate mold. To get the gear mold, you do the same thing, you place steel plate uh, four of them, one on each cardinal direction. Then you have to put a metal gear in the middle. Um, I've been using right here the Buildcraft iron gear for this, but you can also use bronze gears from forestry. You can use Ethereum gears. It doesn't matter what gear it is. However, what it does matter is that it has to be made out of metal. This will not work with Buildcraft stone gears or wood gears, so you can't cheap out like that. Uh, the lowest tier gear you can use from Buildcraft is the iron gear. And that gives you the gear press. To get the rod press, you might think it's just a stick, but it's actually not a stick. You have to use some form of rod. Um, you can use the iron rod from Immersive Engineering for this. However, you can also use tool rods from Tinker's Construct or various other mods. Um, but I got here the iron rod from Immersive Engineering, and that gives you the rod press mold. So now we're going to go ahead and use these and uh, make various things out of steel. So let's just put these in our hotbar. Now the way that you use these is that you right click them onto the uh, press. There, so I've got that mold on the press. I can swap it out for one of the other molds or right click. Uh, how do I get this off of there? Ah, shift right click to take it off. All right, so now if I put this up here, the plate mold, and I chuck a steel ingot on it, we should see something cool happen. Oh, bam, <laughs> love it. Slams down on top of it, and now we have a steel plate. If I put the rod mold in and uh, throw a steel ingot on here. Now, obviously, you probably wouldn't be throwing these on here. You'd have it automated, wouldn't you? And bam, bam. <laughs> now you got a rod. Uh, two of them, actually. Two steel rods. And if I chuck the gear on here. I don't know if steel ingot will work. I don't know if there are any steel gears. Yes, there are. No, there are not. <laughs> There's no steel gears, apparently. Um, so we're going to grab a different material. We're just going to go in here and grab some iron. Um, should, I could just grab one. But yeah, there's no steel gears, so we'll just... Well, that's weird. Hmm. There... It... What's going on? Alright. Something weird happened. Let's uh, reset this. Why did it get stuck on the press? Alright, well I guess I can't demonstrate that because for some reason the iron ingots aren't going through. That's weird. That shouldn't happen. Uh, this is, Maybe the gear press is, is uh, bugged to some extent. Um, it is like a mod integration thing, so maybe maybe it's just not working right now. But uh, those are the three presses, and that's the uh, the metal press for you. It's pretty cool. I like it. It it's very important if you're playing the Revolution Two mod pack because until you make this, you're gonna have to spend two ingots per plate, and that's really expensive. That's like Greg Tech levels of expensive. So you're gonna want to make a metal press immediately as your first multi-block machine if you're playing the Revolution pack. Um, and there's actually a, a quest line in the quest book for that mod pack that uh, has you make this and rewards you with steel for doing it. So that's the metal press. Pretty cool. Nice and useful. Now we're going to take a look at another machine. It's the bottling machine. The bottling machine takes fluid that you pump into it and puts it into containers. It requires five steel scaffolding, two light engineering blocks, and five conveyor belts. And it's crafted as you can see on the picture, it's built actually very simply. So we're going to go ahead and build this thing. I'm going to get this crap out of my uh, screen here and uh, put this stuff back down where it needs to be. Um, so in order to build this thing, we're going to build it over here. I'll go like that. This has to be a light engineering block, another light engineering block there, and then conveyors. Now the orientation of the conveyors is very important because you need to make sure that they actually make it through the system. So if you look at these conveyors, um, the way that they're orientated, it goes from this bit here around the uh, thing to the other side. As long as it, it'll work, you can take this hammer and you can... Okay, where do I have to whack it to make this uh, 
There we go. Whack a conveyor belt. And now that's the bottling machine. It actually looks pretty darn neat. I haven't built this before. It looks pretty cool. So this is the input side. Where it fl and that's the output side, obviously. That's the way the conveyors are going. Um, just like the other machines we've talked about, it takes power into the top. So slap a connector on there and run a wire to our little power grid. Okay. Um, you'll also notice there's a little port on the back of the bottle of the machine, this little hole. That's for fluid pipes. Bonk. So I can, for instance, hook up my fluid tank full of creosote oil to the bottling machine. The bottling machine doesn't have a GUI. Okay. However, if I take a container like a bucket or a empty bottle, which are both objects that creosote oil can be put into, and I... Am I allowed to do that? I'm not allowed to do that. I need to use a conveyor belt. No. Right there. Nope. Ah, right there. Okay. Alright. Get off the conveyor belt. <laughs> and I feed a bucket into this thing. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> I love that animation. <laughs> it like the nozzle like follows it as it goes across. It's so great. Let's throw this bottle on there. Boop, it gets filled up. And you see that? The animation actually shows it being filled. Very cool. So that's the bottling machine. You can put any fluid that can be put into containers into this thing. And any items that count as containers. So there are various items, uh, handheld items that count as containers. Things like, for example, we haven't talked about it yet, but things like the immersive engineering um, mining drill. It's a container because it stores fuel. Um, so th this can be a useful machine for filling um, things that require fuel. I'm not sure how many other mods this works with, but I imagine it should work. It's just filling containers. And as far as a, a, a container filling machine goes, it looks really cool. <laughs> I remember, you know, most bottling machines are just one block, but this thing actually looks pretty darn awesome. So that's the bottling machine. Um, attach a fluid pipe, uh, feed fluids into the back here, and then... Um, it's a weird little symbol. What's that supposed to be? I don't know. And then put uh, containers on here and it will fill them. Very neat. So that's two little machines. They're both small and compact machines um, that you can place in your in your uh, factory that uh, have some very uh, specific use, but uh, they're pretty cool. The metal press and the bottling machine. In the next episode, we're going to go over another machine. Um, we're going to start going over the uh, various ore processing systems of immersive engineering. So uh, in the next episode, we'll talk about the crusher. That'll be a fun episode. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm Sutton Leitch, and I'm signing out.